After harvest, we, we first bring them in, we clean them with air, size them and the rotating drum. We size the chestnuts into three different sizes, small, medium, and large. And the small ones we say are good for snacking, especially eating just fresh. You can eat them either fresh or cooked. The medium size is a good size for roasting. And the large size is good for cooking because if you're going to hand peel a pound of chestnuts, the bigger they are, the easier they are to peel. And then they go into the hot water. We try and get them in the hot water as quickly as possible. Usually it's within, within one day of uh, being harvested. The reason we do the hot water treatment is to, uh, as part of our control of chestnut weevils, which are the beetles that lay eggs in the chestnuts and the grubs that tunnel through and ruin the chestnuts, and what people call worms. Uh, the first step that we see is a, the oviposition hole, which is this is where the female has laid her eggs in the in the nut. It's usually right on the round part of, of the nut. She actually drills through the burr, through the shell, and deposits four or five eggs in the kernel. A few weeks later, after those eggs have hatched and the grubs have tunneled through the kernel and ruined it, then we start to see the exit holes where the grubs have crawled out. We do most of our control by spraying the trees with insecticides three or four weeks before harvest, but we don't quite get them all, and so usually we have about 1% of the nuts that would end up looking like this. The hot water kills the grubs, and if we can actually kill the eggs or the grubs while they're really small, then the nut's still good. At this point, this is a nut that we would, the graders would pick out and throw away. And here's a bin that's ready to go on the grading table. These have been through the hot water. And as they come onto the table, they're going to pick out you know, the blossom end rot. And we all, anything that has a mechanical that would break like that. Uh, we have anything that's Split. This one was probably driven over by a vehicle. Anything that has any defect at all, we are we're gonna pull out. We make a small percent of our crop. We dry and peel, and mostly these are the good nuts that are picked out of the hulls of the fresh nuts. And we can make these dried peeled kernels, which can be used for cooking rehydrated like dry beans and we also make chestnut flour or chestnut meal which can be used in baking or cooking or as a feedstock for brewers or distillers to make uh, fermented into alcohol and it has a real unique chestnut flavor that uh, people who drink those beverages enjoy as we're uh, grading the dried peel kernels and of course these were culls of the fresh nuts to begin with. We pick out the very best ones that go to uh, whole kernels of flour. The second best go to distiller's grade. The ones that are really too moldy for anything, we still save those, we sell those to deer hunters as deer bait. The deer still love them. And uh, so we end up with no chestnut that goes to waste. Fresh chestnuts are really highly perishable, but they have a natural resistance to fungal decay as long as they're kept moist. When they come off the tree, they're 50 or 60% water. If they dry down to 45% water, they lose viability, meaning they won't, they won't ever germinate. And at that point, they also lose the ability to ward off uh, decay organisms like fungi and so the this main secret for keeping chestnuts from getting moldy is to never let them dry out keep them moist we bring them in from the field uh, if it's dry weather and we got them waiting we hose them down 
We put them in the cooler, we keep them wet, we hose them down and keep, keep the surface of the kernel of the shells moist. And ironically, that, the best way to keep them from getting moldy is to not let them dry.